On March 18th, the train shuttle made it safely through the Santa Ynez closure without a hitch, but on March 21st, the shuttle met the final boss of the, his bridge replacement projects, the Poplar Avenue Road Closure. Out of all the bridges of this project, Poplar saw far more cars travel under it than any of the other bridges, and according to the sign near the closure, it will probably remain closed until May 24th, although the actual switch-out will happen the weekend of April 16th. Not only that, Stanbridge sits on Poplar Avenue east of the tracks. Even if you come in from the east side of the Caltrain tracks, you are still affected by detoured traffic. Even more still, all three shuttle routes are blocked. The Ellsworth shuttle route is blocked with this closure, and so are the Delaware and Carlmont routes due to an unrelated project along Tilden Avenue. I recommend taking Monte Diablo Avenue to Stanbridge if you're coming in from the south on El Camino. Before the Poplar closure, the average shuttle time one way from San Mateo to Stanbridge was 3 minutes 38 seconds. After the closure, 3 minutes 47 seconds. That isn't much difference, and there's nothing to worry about. However, we aren't free of concerns. On April 4th, the first Monday after spring break and the start of the fourth quarter, a new schedule shifted some train times. This is a table showing the time changes of all the trains relevant to Stanbridge. The most noteworthy change is that train 156, the regular afternoon train, arrives a full seven minutes earlier than it did before. But aside from that, the closures will be over in less than two months. It's an extremely big problem. Uh, we noticed this morning in particular when we were taking the shuttle in the morning uh, that it took a lot longer than usual. In particular, uh, Poplar was closed. We had to go an alternate route, but then the alternate route got closed. And so we ended up going around the Horn from Bellevue to Delaware and made a right into Stanbridge. It certainly affects our routes. You know, we have to either go down Delaware, which there gets lots of traffic there, so it's a little slower, or we're gonna kind of snake through these side streets, which can be quite narrow. Um, but it certainly affects our, our driving, yes. It's not as big of a problem as we thought it might be. Um, actually, I've rerouted this morning shuttle so that I just come out of our little U in front of the uh, school and immediately take a left instead of going up Poplar and taking a left. And I just go up one or two blocks, take a right, and then go continuing to the train station from there. So it's simply a matter of uh, a one block reroute, uh, and it has not been a problem with time. In late May, there will be one last update on this project. See you next time on Stanbridge Student News. Hello everyone, Student News would like to welcome you back from Spring Break. We are sure you did some cool things over the break, so we decided to ask you more about that. I believe I went to Panama at first. It was very nice. I got to pet a sloth and also many other animals. Also went to see the Panama Canal. It was very interesting how it worked. We went on a Santa Cruz boardwalk trip. Played a lot of fun arcade games. I went on the on the undertow. Second ride I went on was the Giant Dipper. It was built in 1924. Best roller coaster I've ever been on in a long time. I went to this arcade in Alameda. It's called the Get Set Arcade. It kind of considers itself a museum, but basically it's like different arcade games, kind of classics from old times. Some modern ones too, but mostly older ones. And um, it also, um, the thing about it is you don't really get tokens or anything. You just pay to get in either for an hour or for the entire day. And you're in. I went with some of my friends. Sounds like an amazing spring break. Thanks for sharing. And I'll see you next time on Stanford Student News. Since many teachers and students pitch in to donate magazines to the library, Joanna, our librarian, wanted an organized space for them. She noticed that because the magazine rack was in the library, it was not convenient to assess. To solve this problem, she moved the rack into the hall.
so people can get back to seat more easily. Students and staff are welcome to take a back seat home and when they are finished, they are welcome to return the back seat to the rack or give it to someone else. Joanna considers this process as magazine recycling since people borrow the magazines and they can pass them on so others can read them. Well, this actually started because we had a student and a teacher who donated a number of magazines to the library. Jeff Andrade donated a huge amount of Sports Illustrated magazines and people were so excited when they saw these magazines in the library and they wanted to check them out. And I thought, well gee, I want people to be able to take these magazines home, to read them, to pass them on to friends. So we decided to move this rack out here. And please note that the magazines are free, there's no due date, and if you have any old magazines that you're no longer reading, you can donate your old magazines to the center. And you're free to come and take any magazines you want, there's no limit, and enjoy them. This is true recycling. Thank you to all the students and teachers who donate to the magazine rack. Keep on reading. This is a reminder for Edrev. EdRev, or Education Revolution, is a unique day of information, resources, and celebration and community for students who learn differently and the families and professionals who support them. EdRev is going to be on April 16th at AT&T Park in San Francisco. Tickets are $20 and this includes access to the baseball field. Those who would like to attend should register today online at edrevsf.org. On Thursday, March 24th, high school seniors and 8th grade students got their graduation photos taken on the front steps of the school. The photos taken by our photographer, Doug Peck, include individual pictures in a group photo. This is done every year so that portraits can be made to give to families and display during graduation. Afterwards, an 8th grader was interviewed about the event. Uh, I'm all dressed nice and sharp, and uh, we have some great photos. The photos turned out great, and I will see you soon on Stanbridge Student News. Hi everyone, I'm Bonnie. I'm here to remind you about the proper way of using social media. First, let's talk about what's okay to post on social media. Things that are okay to post include telling your friends if you had a good day, posting positive things about your school or work, being as positive on social media as possible, Posting reviews of things and places. Things that are not okay to post include posting personal information like your phone number, address, or password. Having a Facebook account if you are under 13 years of age. Posting lies or false information about you or others. Posting mature content on social media. The internet is a great place but remember to be safe. See you next time on Stanbridge Student News.